Welcome, today we're going to be taking apart an Asus X550Z gaming laptop. This particular model is the X550ZA-WH11 with the ATI Radian R6. So to begin, we're just going to need a small Phillips bit. This is a 2.5. And we're just going to turn the laptop over and remove all of the screws here in the case bottom. All right, once we have those case bottom screws out, we're gonna open up the laptop and we are aiming to separate the palm rest from the bottom case. We're gonna get a little bit of a flat tool here and then just kind of find the seam in between the two. And we're gonna go along and just kind of separate the little catches that hold the palm rest on. So once you have that palm rest popped up a little bit, we're just going to gently lift up and we'll look in there and see what ribbons need to come out to separate. Uh, looks like there's a couple of them. So it looks like the keyboard um, just needs to be unstuck from some tape. And then we're going to push the little tabs on this connector inwards and then that will allow us to separate that ribbon. And then for the two smaller ribbons, uh, we're just gonna lift up on the little retainer. It's white on this one and black on that one. And that will release the two smaller ribbons. So once you have those unhooked, we can go ahead and remove that palm rest. So on the palm rest assembly, it uh, looks like it's just one screw to remove the power button. Keyboard is riveted in, so you're not able to replace that. But if you do need to replace your touchpad, um, you just have a few screws here at the top and then it should lift up and out. So if you need to replace your touchpad, it's pretty easy, but the keyboard um, will stay with the assembly. All right, so we have a good um, good view of the inside of the laptop. So the first thing I like to remove um, is gonna be the battery. It might be a little bit tricky on this one because the connector is actually, looks like it's on the bottom of the motherboard. But yeah, the connector is real easy to get out. So you can actually just kind of gently tug on the wires and wiggle and it'll pop that connector out. Generally, it's not a good idea to pull on the wires, but for the battery and DC jack, um, sometimes you can get away with it because they're, uh, they're pretty um, sturdy. So once you get that connector out, the battery will just pop out. And it looks like we have just one screw to release the optical drive as well. Just remove that screw and then slide it straight out of the SATA connector on the motherboard. All right, so the display assembly looks like it's pretty easy to remove. Um, it's gonna cause the laptop to kind of wobble as we're working on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and release that uh, display assembly right now. So we're gonna to need to remove any of the wires that are connected to the display assembly, which usually means the Wi-Fi antennas, video cable, and sometimes a webcam cable. So for that Wi-Fi card, you just pop straight up on those antennas. And then we're going to just kind of pull it free from the rest of the components here underneath the speaker. All right, so to remove the display, we'll go ahead and remove the sticky tape that is holding on the video cable. Just peel that up. All 
and pull that connector straight out. Alright, so it looks like we're just left with the hinges and we should be able to lift the LCD straight up and out. So now we have the wires removed, we'll go ahead and remove the screws for the hinges. When you go to remove that last hinge, make sure to support the LCD assembly with your other hand. Then we can lift it up and out of the case. All right, so now we'll go ahead and finish removing the boards and other components here with the motherboard. So for the USB board, um, the cable is kind of taped to the hard drive, so you're going to want to lift up and just unstick that tape. And then with that type of retainer, you just flip up and pull the ribbon free. Right, it looks like the hard drive caddy is four screws, and then we can pull that free from the motherboard. All right, once you have the screws out, we're gonna slide the hard drive laterally to remove it from the SATA connector. And then to remove your hard drive from the caddy, there's two screws on each side. All right, so on this particular model, it looks like there's uh, quite a few components on the bottom of the motherboard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the fan and um, Wi-Fi card and looks like that's it uh, with the motherboard. So we're gonna make sure that we get all of the screws that are holding the fan in as well. Okay, looks like it was just that one. And then we can also go ahead and remove any uh, remaining connectors. Looks like we got the one for the speaker. The uh, DC jack looks like it is also underneath. So we're gonna free the DC jack and just hold off on actually pulling it out of the motherboard for now. And then we can remove the motherboard screws. All right, now that we have all the motherboard screws out, we can go ahead and uh, release the motherboard from the case. One thing to note is the ports on the motherboard push through the case on this side, so you always wanna lift from the inside. And then we're gonna pull the motherboard slightly toward us to get those ports out of the case. All right, so now, We can work on the motherboard and the case. If you need to replace the speakers, there's just a couple screws for each one and the rest of it's just an empty case. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just pull up on that piece of tape and then spread the bars to pop those memory sticks up and then you can pull them straight out. And it looks like for the Wi-Fi card, there's one more screw here on the bottom. And then it'll pop out and then you can pull it out. All right, so the last thing we need to remove is the fan and heatsink assembly. 
So with this type of connector, we're just gonna get some fingernails underneath the little notches and pull that connector straight up. And then we'll remove the screws for the heat sink. Now these screws, um, doesn't matter which order you take them out, but when you, if you're gonna reinstall it with thermal paste, um, the arms are marked in the order that you're supposed to tighten them down uh, to kind of evenly compress that thermal paste. But as far as removal, it doesn't matter. All right, so we have all the screws out and now we can just kind of wiggle that until it pops free. If the thermal paste is older, um, sometimes it can make it stick pretty well, but as long as you wiggle that uh, heat sink, it should pop out no problem. And the last thing is the DC jack. So we're just gonna kind of wiggle that connector backwards to remove it from the motherboard. And it looks like that is it. And we have a bare motherboard. All right, finally we are down to the display assembly. Um, this actual display assembly is going to be left complete, but I am going to remove the front bezel and give you a look at the inside of the display assembly. So they are actually pretty easy to work on. So we're gonna just remove these little tiny screw covers here in the front. And as you can see, there's just a couple of Phillips head screws. So we'll go ahead and take those out. All right, so for the bezel, um, you can go at it one of two ways. Um, sometimes you can get a fingernail in the inside and just start pulling. This one seems to be pretty flush. So what we're gonna do is tilt it up on its side and get a flat tool in the little seam between the bezel and the back cover. So we'll go along there and just start popping that bezel up. Sometimes it be a pain to get started, but once you have it, um, once you've undone a couple snaps, then you should be able to get the rest of the bezel off without too much trouble. All right, so once you've popped it off for the rest of the way, you can remove it and see the inside. So most laptops are near uh, the same as what this one is. Uh, this particular one, it looks like there's four screws to remove the actual LCD display um, and then one video cable. So once you have those removed, and I believe this little digitizer assembly or whatever it is also goes with it. Um, so once you have those removed, you can flip up the screen and just remove that little video cable there. It's usually just held on by some sticky tape. And then of course the hinges are, looks like about four screws on each side. And then the webcam and Wi-Fi antennas are just held on by uh, some adhesive. So the display is really easy to work on and I don't believe you even need to remove this one from the laptop. You can um, just do the procedure that I showed you to remove the bezel while it's still on the laptop. So in case you need to remove your 
uh, LCD because it's broken or cracked. It's actually really, really simple. You could probably do the repair in a half hour or less if you broke your screen. So that is how you disassemble a, an Asus X550Z. This one is the X550ZA-WH11. And if this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.